What is good everybody? Welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Today we are doing a very special video and an updated video, but it's a little bit different this time. I think it was two years ago, we had around like 20 or 22 Ultimate Editions from Mattel, and we did a ranking style video where we do the tier list. We've done it multiple times on the channel. We have so many more coming to the channel this year even. And so I figured, since I own every single Ultimate Edition outside of two, which we'll get into, I figured let's take every WWE Ultimate Edition action figure from Mattel so far, and I'm going to pull them on screen one by one and rank them from dead last to the top Ultimate Edition ever made from Mattel. I believe there are 56 total, there may be 57 total, and I believe I have checked every single Ultimate Edition off the list, but today we're going to be ranking every WWE Ultimate Edition from Mattel from worst to best. Now, of course, there's so many things that go into the criteria for the ranking, and it's always going to be based on the same MDT criteria that we rank every single other thing here on the channel. Excitement level for the figure execution level of the figure, posability, likeness, feel in hand, does it portray the character from my television? These are all things that we're going to take into consideration when ranking these figures. So here we go, man. The only two figures that I do not have that are going to be in this video are the Chase Razor Ramon figure and the Attitude Era Ultimate Edition Kane. I have that Kane, but it's meant on card. I have not got my loose one yet. And then Razor Ramon, I have not found the Chase just yet. So those are the those are, those are my two bugaboos. So that being said, man, let's shut the hell up and rank every single WWE. WWE Ultimate Edition action figure from Mattel from worst to best in my own personal opinion. Let's get started. So coming in at number 56 at the very bottom of the ranking is going to be the Edge Ultimate Edition, man. And I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on these figures, but I do want to give a short description on why certain figures ended up at certain spots. Just because there's 56 of them, and if I did one minute on each one, it would be an hour plus long video, which I guess wouldn't be the worst thing ever, but I'm not trying to be here for two, three hours, you know what I'm saying? So in short, I was very hyped for this Edge, but the execution just wasn't there. It's his return gear. It has the weird kick pad thing here. They use that skinny body mold. It doesn't have butterfly joints. The head sculpts weren't the best. Tattoos get cut off by the pins. It's just one of those releases. It even had that crazy hair blow and backhead sculpt, which is, I have mixed feelings about that one. But I have a shirt on here. With the shirt on here, it doesn't look that bad. But you take this shirt off. Hold up. We gotta, we gotta show you. With the shirt off, this just, this guy looks like a damn finishing moves figure from Jax. Number 55, Ultimate Edition Becky Lynch. Now, I have fixed this figure up. And since I changed some stuff, her legs are super duper loose. But this head sculpt is beautiful. Like, it, with the fix ups, it looks fine. But before you fix it up, man. It has a lot of weird stuff going on with it. They said they spent hours executing this Becky Lynch head sculpt. It's not this one. I fixed it up because I couldn't stand looking at it, but the Becky Lynch head sculpts this came with were horrendous. Just absolutely horrendous. Looked nothing like Becky Lynch. Easily just a huge letdown, and I love Becky Lynch so much, but this figure is definitely a miss, and that's why it comes in at number 55. Number 54 is Goldberg. This Goldberg figure just looks weird, man. Just look at him. No, but seriously, though, this torso just doesn't work for a lot of people, man. I feel like he just, like, I don't like this head sculpt. I don't think it really looks like him. I feel like it just looks very odd. And it's, I mean, it's a pretty plain Jane Ultimate Edition, right? I mean, I know that he can't really help it, but I just feel like he's overly done up top compared to the legs. I just don't feel like he's very proportionate, and he just looks a bit odd. And it's definitely not one of my favorite Ultimate Editions, man. I think you have some cool stuff going on with this figure, but it's just not one of my favorites. It comes in towards the bottom. Number 53 is Shinsuke Nakamura, man. This figure has grown on me a lot, but I didn't like the head sculpts first off. And it was basically, you know, again, this is the second series of Ultimate Editions. So being the second series, it did miss a lot of the marks. Doesn't have butterfly joints. It shell formed a little bit when it first released. It's just not the most exciting figure of all time. But in a world full of fantastic Ultimate Editions, it's just not towards the top. Next up may get me some heat, but I'm down to stand in the kitchen, Brad. We have number 52, the first. Ultimate Warrior Ultimate Edition. You could argue this is the first Ultimate Edition ever. I just feel like, uh, I mean, like, just look at the torso, man. He just looks a bit odd, right? This figure, these early Ultimate Editions without butterfly joints just really struggle because they don't have the added articulation. And like, nobody likes, or a lot of people don't like, I'm in the company of, I don't really care for Ultimate Edition torsos anyway. I like butterfly joints because they allow for better posability and you can get some crazy poses. And he did come with a badass entrance jacket. I do like the gear, but like this 
figure just has some issues like look at this the legs every time he stands up his feet want to do a slide he's pretty loose i mean he's just he you could tell that he's early on in the process and i don't hate the figure it's just it, it lacks in quality even though i really like the gear it lacks in quality and so uh he he's towards the bottom for me i, I feel like they have they haven't really released just the t the best ultimate warrior they could possibly do just yet so I'm, I'm patiently waiting on them to do an ultimate warrior that feels right and we'll get into that in this countdown next up is a figure that i actually like but it is lacking and coming in at number 51 we have the triple h series 3 ultimate edition i waited for years for this gear but much like ultimate warrior i mean just look at this torso man he's just lacking he looks very odd and i like the head sculpts the accessories were solid and i don't mind the figure i just feel like it could be so much better and so it's kind of a plain jane release we are getting it in that re-release i think him and ultimate warrior are coming in the second greatest hits wave of ultimate edition so i don't know man that's triple h right there kind of a plain jane one to enter in here coming in at number 50 we have the fan takeover ultimate warrior now really this figure is not bad in the sense of all things considered but we have seen this figure twice i do believe already for mattel and so i didn't want to see this in an ultimate edition i don't know why they gave it to us in ultimate edition form i like the coloration of it the head sculpts aren't horrendous but they're pretty much the exact same head sculpts we've seen in the past he has painted on armbands or, or wrist tape whatever i feel like it would have been cooler to see like some sculpted on stuff but we've seen this figure before and it was just like it's not bad it's just like why are we getting this again in ultimate edition form so that's just kind of my reasoning there number 49 is going to be the first fiend figure i like this figure i like a lot of the stuff that it's got going on with it but i just feel like he's frumpy lumpkins we've discussed it here on the channel he just looks frumpy it doesn't capture bray wyatt as much as i'd like i like the boots and everything i hate that it has a painted on belt this is an ultimate edition man you got to sculpt that stuff on but i just feel like he's frumpy lumpkins and for that reason like he's shorter than his elite figure and that's just that's just ridiculous man you can't be frumpy lumpkins and you can't be worse than your elite when you're worse than your elite you you've already lost number 48 is the fan takeover triple h in the dx gear this is actually a gear and a uh, like a shirt and a look of triple h i wanted for a long time but you guys will notice that the shirt's on there this torso does not work for this era of triple h it's way too overly jacked and i know they overdo him a lot of the times but the head sculpts also look a little bit cartoony and while i do enjoy this figure and everything like that they're certainly much better ultimate editions and i can acknowledge that so this this triple h is going to go here even though i love the gear i love the shirt i like the head sculpts it could just be executed a lot better and i hope that we get a better version in the future number 47 is the first bret hart figure this one's not a terrible release but it did come in series two next to shinsuke nakamura the head sculpts were not very good i like the gear but it just uh it has a lot of the problems that early ultimate editions face no butterfly joints things of that nature it's not a bad figure but i th i think that the the legends figure is certainly better and so th this one's definitely not up there in the top of the top for me so that is why bret hart is coming in here just ahead of triple h number 46 is going to be the second version of the rock the updated quote-unquote rock i didn't like this figure because i feel like if they were going to give it to us here the best thing about this figure is going to be the head sculpts i do like the head sculpts we get on this thing but i don't know i just felt like it's kind of a plain jane release it it, it it also came with a shirt that I don't think he ever wore on WWE television, or at least to my knowledge. He may have wore it, it just, it's been a while, but I don't know. I just felt like this wasn't the most exciting release ever, and it's not a horrible one. There's just, mo there's a lot better Rock figures in my honest opinion, and I don't know. I just, it's just not one of my favorite figures ever. It's not a bad release again, but there are better versions, and sometimes that, that's what, that's what happened. This one may shock some people, but just hear me out. Number 45 is the Coliseum Collection Hulk Hogan. Now, we know that they have released pretty much the exact same Hulk Hogan three separate occasions, and I think out of the three versions just like this, this is the worst, and while this is a damn good figure, I love the figure head to toe pretty much. You can only repaint a figure so many times before it gets jumped by other figures, and so I think the other two versions like this, which will appear future uh, in the future of this countdown, Coliseum Collection Hogan is a great piece. I love this figure, but it's it's got to go down here just ahead of the rock. Number 44 is going to be the second Fiend figure. I think this figure is slightly better than the first go around. I like the head sculpts. I like all the usage that we got going on here. He looks to be a little bit taller, not as frumpy as the first version. And I like this figure. I, it's not the most exciting release. It did shelf form. It's not worth a hill of beans now, I don't think. You could probably get it for the lint out of your pocket, but I still like the figure. I think the sculpt is really, really amazing, like the mask sculpt and the different stuff they got going on with this figure. I actually enjoy this piece, even though it isn't the greatest figure of all time. I can't enjoy it, and I, I like that they got away from the frumpy lumpkins of the first version. Number 43 is the crowd fun.
one Diesel figure. Diesel's not the most exciting guy ever anyways, but I like the head sculpts. I think that it was a cool addition to the new generation arena. RIP to the WCW stage. Where would those Ultimate Editions have ranked in this video? Who knows, but we'll never know, I guess. But the Diesel figure, while it was cool, it was the worst out of the crowd fund, in my opinion. I was never a big Diesel guy. I love Kevin Nash and everything like that. I just never was a fan, personally, of the Diesel character. And it's just, you know, it's, it's black and silver. It's a tall guy. It's not my favorite. He comes in here at this spot. This one might shock some people as well, but I think there's better iterations of the character. Number 42 is the Legends Macho Man. I like this figure a lot. I really, really do. I love all the Macho Man figures that we've been getting, but out of all the Macho Men Ultimate Editions, I think this is my least favorite so far. I do enjoy it. I like the two-shirt gimmick. I like everything going on with it, but at the end of the day, I, I just think there's better Ultimate Editions, and that's, that's where we are right here, man. I love Macho, but he comes in at number 42. Number 41 is going to be this actually might shock some people a lot. The first Ultimate Edition John Cena. You know, much like the earlier Ultimate Editions, he has the old school torso. He doesn't have any butterfly joints. I love the gear. Cena's my favorite of all time, right? So I'm going to heavily critique his figures. This figure is not the most posable. And it's very similar to his, his second figure, but it isn't as good. But I do like this figure. I enjoy this figure a lot. Cena is my goat. But I can acknowledge there's better Ultimate Editions out there. So I'm going to put John Cena right here. He could probably be higher, I'm going to be honest. And and seeing him here kind of pains me, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna put him here. Coming in at 40, not wearing her robe, is the Charlotte Ultimate Edition. This is actually a very strong women's figure. I'm not a huge fan of Charlotte. I think the gear is fantastic and everything like that. I'm just not the biggest fan of Charlotte. I don't really have a huge quarrel with this figure. It's definitely one of the better women's Ultimate Editions for sure. I enjoy others more, and this is my ranking. You know what I mean? The robe is fantastic. The head sculpt's very good. The gear is very good. It's a very good figure. I I. Do not dock it 100%. We're entered into figures that are still very good. They're just not as good as the ones that are in front of them, in my opinion. So there is Charlotte here at number 40. Number 39 is going to be the most recent Ultimate Edition Series 15 Ultimate Warrior. This figure would probably be higher. I love all the bells and whistles and the colorful gear. Like, this is the this is a great Ultimate Warrior figure. I just don't like the head sculpts. I'm not the biggest fan of Warrior, but these head sculpts, this, this specific head sculpt that's on it right now, I mean, I guess in the unpainted like post-match one. They look like the thing on the wing from the Twilight Zone with William Shatner. There's a man out there. There's a man on the wing and his name's Ultimate Warrior. That was him. At least this figure. This figure was out there on the airplane wing. Not a big warrior guy, but this figure is very cool. But it's just not one of the top of the top. He comes in at 39. This one might shock some people as well, but we shall see. Number 38 is the Andre the Giant Ultimate Edition. His head is so damn tall, he doesn't even fit on screen. But I don't like that the singlet doesn't match up. This is a solid edition. It's a middle-of-the-pack Ultimate Edition. Not the most exciting. Very cool release. Glad to have it in the collection, but it's, it's kind of boring. Let's be honest. It's kind of a boring release, and that is why he's coming here in the middle of the pack. I can acknowledge it's a great figure or a solid figure without, you know, having him in the top 20. So, Andre the Giant, very solid addition. Number 37 is the Coliseum Collection Jake the Snake Roberts. This figure has actually grown on me a lot. Every time I pick up this figure, it seems to grow on me a little bit more. Maybe move up the list one or two spots. Very good addition. I like it. Kind of plain Jane. Wish that it was different gear than we had already seen on an Elite figure. I understood why they picked this gear, but I like this figure overall. It's just not my favorite of all time. So, he's coming in here just ahead of Andre the Giant. Number 36 is the the Tribal Chief. We have the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns. This figure, if they did his torso differently and they figured out how to make him not look so damn weird, he would be much higher on the list. Like, just look how weird this figure is. Look at how the hair stretches out. Look at the torso. Way too ripped. His shoulders are too wide and the way that his feet land. He has, like, bow-legged syndrome here with these shield legs and the feet bow out. But I do love Roman Reigns. I love when you dress this figure up, how cool it is. I like the screaming, like, ooh-ah head skull. I love the sculpted gauntlet and hand. There's some really great things about this figure, but there's also some bonehead things. I love all the tattoo work. They don't have any shoulder gaps or nothing, so this figure is very good. It's just, it could be so much better, and if they were to perfect this figure, it'd probably be a top 10 ultimate, but for me right now, he's coming here at the number 36 spot. Yeah, 36. Number 35 might shock you. Nah, a lot of people actually drag this figure. I, I actually have it in higher regard than a lot of other people. It is going to be the second Ultimate Edition Jeff Hardy 
figure. I actually like this figure a lot. Like, just look how cool this figure looks here with the shirt, the necklace, the face paint. It's not our favorite iteration of, of Je Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy's one of my favorites of all time. I love the white pants, the zebra print. You guys know how I how I roll, so that fits for me. I love Jeff Hardy. I love the old, I like the updated torso they use for him. I actually like this figure a lot. It's not the best ever. It's not my favorite head sculpts, but as a Jeff Hardy fan, as a guy who enjoys his work and loves his action figures, I have like 70 or 80 elites and ultimates of Jeff Hardy, so I love this figure, but it could be much, much better, and it's not as good as his first go around. However, there are some things that can make his first one better, which we'll get into, but this Jeff Hardy is not as shitty as everybody says it is, but it's definitely not one of the best ultimates of all time. Number 34 is going to be Razor Ramon. This figure is solid. It's a good addition. I, I feel like it could be better, though, which is why he's here. And actually, right after this, number 33 on the countdown would be the Chase Razor. I think the Chase Razor is better than the regular version, so number 34 is the regular version. Number 33 is the Chase. But I feel like this figure is kind of too small, especially in the torso area. I feel like the head sculpts could be better. And again, it's, it's kind of like Andre the Giant. It's a solid addition into the Ultimate line, but it's not the best ever. So there is him. Number 32 is going to be the Fan Takeover Hulk Hogan figure. Or I guess, I mean, shit, this is pretty much the WCW Nitro stage Ultimate Hulk Hogan, isn't it? I mean, it's damn close, but I like this figure, you know, I hate I kind of hate how it's like they use like the Elite 91 head sculpt for it, but I like the updated tan. I like the accessories. It could have been better. It's plain Jane, but I think it, you know, it, I don't, does it deserve an ultimate edition? I don't know, but I think the execution of the figure is solid, and it's it's a middle of the road ultimate. It's not going to like blow your face off, but it is a solid edition, and I can, I can respect it, so I'm going to put him here at the 32 spot. Coming in at 31 is going to be the Undertaker Series 11 figure. This figure's grown on me a lot. I think he'd probably be, high. like I love how Jack the arms are. I like that they use the muscular shoulders. I like a lot of the things going on with this figure. I really do, but I don't like how, like, the torso looks, how it's so, so big up here and then so skinny. I feel like the gradual needs to be better. I just feel like it just looks kind of like a thing sitting on top of there, and if this figure had come out like we thought it was with, like, the Michael Jackson head sculpts, it probably would have been much more docked, but I enjoy this figure. I feel like this is one that a lot of people kind of sleep on, but I like the Undertaker. I like this Ultimate. I think he's deserved of an ultimate. We also have another ultimate coming soon, but yeah, you know, it's ultimate, it's ultimate taker. He comes in at number 31. Coming in at number 30 is going to be the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive ultimate Sergeant Slaughter figure. I like this figure a whole lot. I could be wrong. I want to say this is one of the first ultimates to feature the butterfly joints. I could be wrong about that. Maybe, uh, maybe my memory's not serving me correctly, but this is a really cool release. I loved the execution of this one. I feel like his shoulders or his arms are too big and they kind of make for like a weird thing here. I just feel like his proportions may be a bit out of whack, but I really enjoy this. I love the USA singlet. Just a just a cool release. Just such a badass SDCC release. Really enjoyed this one. Love the boots. Pretty cool one. I think it is deserving of a top 30 spot. So he came in right at the edge at the number 30 spot of the best Ultimate Edition. All right, we're into the top 30. Number 29 is going to be the SDCC exclusive Zeus figure from the two-pack with Rip. Very fun figure. This is the torso they should use for Roman Reigns. I think it works works perfectly for him. I like the gauntlets, the belt, the head sculpt. A very unique figure. We did we did see him put in the Elite line, but as an Ultimate Edition Mattel figure, I think this is such a cool pack. I think the Rip and Zeus was such an, a, a cool inclusion. It's definitely a top 30 Ultimate. I think it's really cool. They did a great job executing him. A lot of attention to detail here. I think it is deserving of number 29 spot. Number 28, Coliseum Collection. Terry Funk figure. Very cool release. Not my favorite look of Terry Funk, but I thought this was so cool to see an ultimate Terry Funk. I like all the bells and whistles he's got going. I like his hat. I like the head sculpts on this figure. Very cool inclusion into the Ultimate Edition line. Not up my wheelhouse, but I can still respect it. This actually, I think this was like my number 10 ultimate from last year, so I, I enjoy this one. I, I think this is a cool release, and I like the Terry Funk, so he comes in at 28. Number 27 may shock some people. I'm not sure, but it is the Ric Flair Ultimate Edition. I love the pink robe. I'm sure we're probably going to get more Ric Flair's down the road, I assume. I could just see that taking place, you know. They kind of got away from his name there for a second, but I'm sure they'll be back. But I like the purple gear. I love the pink robe and the violet colors you got going on. I did put a different head sculpt on here, but I love the wooing head sculpt that this figure had. I know a lot of people probably have this one in their top 10, top 5, but for me, it comes outside there. I wasn't 
ever like a huge Ric Flair fan. I respect the guy's career and everything, but for me, he comes in at number 27. Number 26, we have the Macho Man. Now, this is one of the ultimate figures that really caught me by surprise when it first released. I, I didn't think I would like it that much, but once I got it in hand, started posing him around, I was like, oh damn, this is actually a very solid addition. And then you have the white leather jacket, you have all the bells and whistles, the pink and the yellow. It's not what I think of when I think of Macho Man, but it's still a really cool figure that really shocked me out of the box. And for that reason, you know, it, it, it I hold it in high regard. I actually like this figure a lot. So he comes in at 26. I know I'm gonna get flack on this one, Brad, but number 25 is the Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Now, the only reason this figure isn't as high as it should be is because this figure could be so much better. You know, if they fix the weight belt, they fix the skin tone, they add in some different bells and whistles, that sunglasses don't fit the head as good as they should, this figure can be so much better. And I know when they do the re-release of this figure or they give us an updated version, it's gonna be so damn good. It's probably gonna be in that top five, that top 10 area. But for now, he's been surpassed. He was in like the top five Ultimates ever, but we've had so many releases since this guy came out that he got pushed back and he could be so much better. So I'm sure he will make a jump once he gets updated. But there is Hollywood Hulk Hogan at number 25. Number 24 is the fan takeover Jeff Hardy. This one, I know a lot of people are going to be like, what the hell, Brad? And you know what? I love this figure. I do hate how big the torso is. If you were to switch out his torso for an AJ Styles or switch out his torso for the other, you know, the second Jeff, this figure would be significantly better and I think people would high, you know, hold it in a much higher regard. They did give him a way too big of a torso but I like this era of Hardy. I like the green sleeves. This is a figure I wish I had more of just for parts and stuff like that but he also has a necklace that I didn't include here but I did. I painted the screaming face paint to give him like a normal Hardy here for this era and I like the head sculpts and everything like that. It's just, you know what, if this was a perfect formula Hardy it would probably be in my top 10 but you know, it's 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 not reality, so he had to come here at 24. Coming in at 23, we have the first Shawn Michaels figure. I like this Shawn Michaels a lot. You know, you're looking at a very early figure. This was like from Series 4, so this is legitimately like the seventh Ultimate Edition they ever did. But I like the entrance gear a lot. I thought the head sculpts were decent. I like this screaming expression. I like the entrance gear, like I said. I actually like this one a whole lot, but I don't like the skinny torso they gave him. No butterfly joints, things of that nature. And I guess the skinny torso kind Kind of works for him more, but I still I still like other Ultimates better, even though I really do enjoy the Sean. He comes in at 23. At 22, we do have a controversial one. We have the Ultimate Edition Mattel Creations exclusive Cody Rhodes figure. One of maybe like 30 people that have this figure in hand so far, maybe. It may be more than that, but this figure did disappoint me heavily, but I think the coat is nice. I like the head sculpts. I don't know how I feel about the torso. The tights are not accurate, and this is one that I was super excited and hyped for. And I thought when I got this figure in hand, it would be in my top five ultimates, my top ten ultimates. But it ultimately, pun intended, disappointed me. And for those reasons, he comes in at 22. He just, he's not as good as he could be. Jacket could fit better. Torso choice is still up in the air. Tights incorrect color. On a proper, with all those issues fixed, he's probably a top 10, top 5 ultimate. But I can't put him there in all good graciousness. Number 21, SDCC Rip. This figure is so damn clean, man. The Carolina blue and white is so damn clean. And like I said with the Coliseum Collection Hogan that's way back in the 40s, this one's just too damn good not to put up here in the top 21. He is so damn clean, man. I just love the aesthetic of this figure, and I think, all things considered, if there was different bells and whistles to this one between the one that's very similar to this and the Coliseum Collection, who knows where we go there, but he comes in at 21. This one is probably gonna make people vomit, but at number 20, I have the Ultimate Edition Ronda Rousey. Yeah, I do, okay? Anybody that knows me, that saw the review of this figure originally, that knows about my feelings towards women's figures and stuff like that. You know that I hold this figure in a very high regard. I just think that it poses around with the best of them. This is one of the best women's action figures Mattel's ever done. Now, looking back at it now, like, this is probably going to be one of those women's figures that maybe five, ten years in the future, we're going to look back and I'm going to say, look at this Ronda Rousey, and we're going to laugh and say, damn, this figure sucks compared to now. But when you put it in the context of the time, this figure just is so poseable. I just love this figure. I think if you do not own this figure, you need to go track it down, because whatever they did with this figure, it's just so much better than her other figure. Figures. It's ridiculous. It's it's so good. It feels so good in the hand. It poses around the best, and I love this Ronda, so she comes in at number 20. This one might shock some people as well. Number 19 is going to be the Crowd Fund Ultimate Edition Doink figure. Very different outside the box release here. Love the mallet. Love the entrance jacket. I think they did this figure a lot.
lot of favors. I think they did a fantastic job on this piece. A lot of people probably have this again in their top 10, top 5 ultimates ever done by Mattel. I think it's good. I think it's solid, but I feel like you have to take it into consideration some other things. And so for me, he comes here at number 19. I think it's a great release. It was one of my favorites of last year, but he's not, you know, he's not in the best ever for me. He is top 20. He is in the top, but he's not, you know, top 10 area. Coming in at 18 is the Crowd Funder Macho or Savior Macho Man, as I like to deem him here on the channel. I don't know who deemed him that first. I want to say it was me, but I could be wrong about that. He saved the first Crowd Funder ever, and I tried to do an edit on Instagram where when the WCW Nitro stage was winding down and we were running out of time, I wanted to do the I Need a We Need a Hero song from Spider-Man, and I wanted to plug that in with a picture of Macho Man and the Crowd Funding project for the WCW Nitro stage because I probably plugging another Macho Man in there probably would have saved it all possibly but that's all jokes but I love the checkerboard and the black and white pattern I love black and white together I think it's a great contrast and this one's so much better than the legends in my opinion yeah the checkerboard jacket the soft goods here the hat the black and white legs this is a great thing I love this this is my favorite ultimate over the door I like this better than the doink and the crowdfunder number 17 is one of the most underrated ultimates they've ever done man the Mr. T ultimate edition Love all the accessories we got with this guy. Great formula, great looking figure, great head sculpts. This one I hold in a very high regard. I just like this figure so much. Being a Mr. T guy, being somebody that enjoys his work and everything like that, man. I love the hat that we got. I like I, just everything about this figure is just so fun. And it's so underrated. It's so underrated. Such an underrated ultimate here. He comes in at the number 17 spot for me. I'm sure this one's going to shock some people as well. Number 16 is the Alexa Bliss Ultimate Edition. I mean, say what you will, but you have so many things going on with this figure. When you can execute two, three, four figures into one in one single figure, it's unbelievable. You get the black shirt, you get the pink shirt, you get the overall stuff, you have her wrestling gear underneath, you have her shoe mold here, you have the white gloves, great looking head sculpts that look just like the talent. She's very tiny, just like she is in real life. Scales well with the rest of her figures. A very, very good Ultimate Edition. Definitely the best women's Ultimate Edition in my personal opinion. I know this one kind of shelf-warmed. When you talk about feel in hand and you talk about likeness to the character, character on TV and the amount of fix-ups I can do with this figure. I think pound for pound as an action figure, this does so, so many things right and Mattel does a great job on this one. I think the feet are probably a little bit too big, but I like the detailed shoes here. Like, she has custom shoes. So, I don't know, man. They did a really excellent job on this Alexa Bliss. So, I gotta give them their flowers on that one. I know you have this Alexa Bliss in front of all these legends and, like, all these different figures. But, we're talking about the figures themselves. And I think it was pretty damn good execution. Alright, man. Top 15 time. We have the Coliseum Collection Rickety Rude here, man. Really enjoyed this figure. I love the head sculpts. Not my favorite gear, but I thought the robe was executed nicely. Love the new torso. Butterfly joints. Really good execution of Brick Rude. I like this figure a lot. He came in at number 15. Number 14 is the Target exclusive Legends Bret Hart figure. Love the pink and black attack here. Love the pink jacket. Much better than his first go around, I think. I think the addition of the butterfly joints. I think the only way they can make this figure better is just giving him a better formula. I just hate how, you know, certain guys are massive compared to other guys, and I just feel like they really need to figure out that that, you know, that sort of formula, but the pink and black Brett for me is number 14 in the top Ultimate Editions ever. Number 13 is the first Rock Ultimate Edition. This figure was so ahead of its time. It was so sought after for so long, obviously. It is getting an update in the Legends Target exclusive, which is probably going to be a little bit better because it's the same head sculpt except better formula, better things like that. You have the track suit included. This one did include this Brahma Bull shirt, though, that is very nice. I did fix it up. I figured I was going to get a Rock Ultimate Edition without it, but then we ended up getting an Elite in the same exact attire, so I was like, you might as well just leave the accessories on this one and then play around with different head sculpts, which is why I want to get multiple head sculpts or multiple versions of the Legends Target Exclusive because I can use that those head sculpts for fix-up rocks and different looks like that. So this was a very good iteration of Rock, and it holds up over time. That's why it's in the top of the top when you consider Ultimate Edition. Coming in at number 12 is a figure, if they redo it, I feel like they can do it better and it would probably jump, but for the time, man, this was so good. The Ultimate Edition Finn Balor, the Demon Finn Balor. This one really blew me away when it first came out. I think that it's so good, but once we get an updated version without pins and we get butterfly joints and, you know, we get some different things ex executed here, I'd like to see him on ball joints rather than the pine cone joints, but this is one of my favorite Ultimate Editions ever. I love Finn Balor. You guys know, if you're a fan of the channel, you know how much I love Finn. I love the Demon character. I love his action figure, so this was a very good release for me. I love this figure so much, and it had to be in my top 12. It used to be higher, but it has been surprising 
surpassed multiple times by newer figures, so it's very good and dated, but it does stand the test of time. It is top 12 for me. Number 11, the Hulk Hogan Ultimate Edition Series 13 figure. This figure right here is so damn good. I mean, you know, again, we've seen this figure three different times pretty much just repainted. You have this, the Rip, and the Coliseum Collection, but I think when you're talking born and bred Hulk Hogan, you have the red and yellow, the iconic, the legendary. This captures everything about him. These head sculpts are so perfect. I mean, they knocked this one out of the park. A lot of people should have this one in their top five. I mean, this is one of the best Hulk Hogan action figures ever made. So this is just, if you like Hulk Hogan, you have to have this. You have to have this. This is that damn good. This is, for me, just uh, one of the best Ultimate Editions. And if you have it higher, I wouldn't doubt you for a second. It honestly probably should be top 10, but he's number 11 for me right now. Number 10 is going to be the Fan Takeover Shawn Michaels. I love this figure so much. I love the gear. I love the entrance gear. And you're probably wondering why is this one so much higher than the first version? Well, it's pinless. You know, I like this gear better. I like these head sculpts better with like the braid. I just think overall this one's much better. He also has butterfly joints and different things that the other one doesn't have. So I really like this fan takeover, Sean. It just looks so good. It really does. The colors are so good and clean. I just love this Sean so much. He came in at number 10. Coming in at number 9, a figure they could redo and do better, I think. But for now, he is number 9. And if they redo it or update it, he could be higher, but it's going to be the Stone Cold Steve Austin, one of my favorites of all time. I just think that they could do something different here. I think they could make him a little bit bulkier, maybe in the torso and the legs. I don't really agree with some of the, you know, the formula choices here, but all the accessories you get, the head sculpts were phenomenal. As a personal fan of Stone Cold Steve Austin or a big fan of Stone Cold, this one does come in for me. Like, see that last Sean, the torso is bigger than this one. That just doesn't make sense to me. So there's, you know, this figure's not perfect by any means, which is why he's not even higher, but I think he is uh, worth it, worthy of a top 10 spot, and I like that Ultimate Edition Stone Cold a hell of a lot. Number 8 is going to be the Ultimate Edition Kane. This figure is ridiculous. This figure is a perfect Kane figure. I love the formula. It crushes the Elite 12, in my opinion. You have butterfly joints. I love that they have, like, the painted-on sleeve over here and the sculpt here. You have the gauntlets the belt. It looks menacing. These mask sculpts are perfect. This is just such a beast, man. This is the best Kane action figure ever. Actually, I guess it, technically it's not because the next one, number eight is this version. Number seven is the Attitude Era Kane. I think it looks slightly better, so I would go with the Attitude Era Ultimate Kane over this one. So this one's eight. That one is number seven. Coming in at number six is the first Ultimate Edition Brock Lesnar. This figure is crazy because I used to think that how could you possibly top this? And I just loved how seamless this figure was. You guys know that I held this figure in such high regard. I thought it was such a beast of a release, and it's still so good and holds up over time. But they have they have since topped this, obviously, But and there are better Ultimate Editions. But for a while, this was the number one Ultimate Edition for me personally, and it, it was up there. It was definitely up there. I thought that it was up there in the, in the top of the top, but it has since been surpassed. But you can't get over how damn good that Brock Lesnar is. All right, man, we've entered top five territory for me. Number five is going to be the second. Second Ultimate Edition John Cena. This is right up there in my peak fandom. This hits me in all the nostalgia feels, man. Chain Gang John Cena. Obviously, I love John Cena. Dr. Thugonomics Chain Gang. This is uh, everything for me. This John Cena right here is perfect. It's not perfect. It's definitely not perfect, but it's definitely up there. It's so good, man. The execution, one of my favorite John Cena attires of all time. Getting the Chain Gang shorts, getting the armbands, the white you can't see. This is just such peak. They, they could do it better, though. They could add pinless joints. They could redo the torso. They can revisit the formula. I'm excited to see where we go with Cena figures in the future, but this one is one of my favorite Mattel releases, I'd say. Personally, this is probably one of my favorites, but I don't want the countdown to be all personal. I'm trying to give it some unbiased takes as well, mixed in with it. But coming in at number four is going to be the Target Legends exclusive Batista. This is so good, man. The storyline that this figure revolves around, and the contracts and everything like that. Probably one of my favorite wrestling storylines of all time is Evolution and Randy Orton and Batista and they're coming, they're coming of their own, and getting kicked out of Evolution, and the decision, and all of that stuff wrapped up into a figure. This captures that perfectly, and that is one of my favorite times as a wrestling fan, so this just really wraps that up to a bow, and I love Batista, and I just like this figure. White gear, I mean, you, you have so many cool accessories with this guy. I love this Batista. I own a lot of versions of this figure. I also own a lot of these as well, so if I own multiples of a figure, that's usually a sign that I enjoy that figure a lot. All right, man, top three Ultimate Editions by Mattel. Coming in at number three, as of now, honestly, three and two could probably be interchangeable given the day, but 
today in this instant, I'm going to go with AJ Styles. I love this figure ever since they showed off the render image. I thought it was beautiful. The white and blue gear. My favorite colors on the tights. The white tights. The head sculpts are phenomenal, pun intended. Upgraded formula, AJ Styles. Chef's kiss. Not perfect. Could be slightly better. I think he's a uh, uh, maybe a little bit too tall. The, the torso is maybe a little bit too big. But this is, and they also made him lighter than he's supposed to be. Like he should have a tan, like a slight tan, like a Seth Rollins skin tone. But this one is so good. If you see this one at retail, man, you gotta have it. If you're an AJ Styles fan, go grab this AJ Styles. This is the best AJ Styles action figure ever made. At number two, we have one of the most recent Ultimate Editions that we have on this list, and that is going to be the Ultimate Edition 17 Seth Rollins. The fur coat on this guy is outrageous. The formula they use is outrageous outrageous. The head sculpts are great. Feels immaculate in hand. I love the proportions and the tights and the scale and just the sculpts you have going on with this guy are unbelievable. This Seth Rollins is going to be one of the best action figures released all year and uh, th this is one of the best ultimates they've made. It, it absolutely is. You feel it in hand, you know what I'm talking about. This Seth Rollins is one of the best of the best. He comes in at number two. And the best, the number one, the grand finale, the best ultimate edition WWE action figure they've ever made to this point at time of recording production in our hands. The Ultimate Edition Series 15 Brock Lesnar figure. If you own this figure, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This figure feels like it could beat your ass in your sleep. It could assault you. How it feels in hand, how it poses, what it looks like, it captures his likeness, the seamlessness of the figure. This looks like you shrunk down Brock Lesnar into an action figure, and it just feels so quality in your hand, man. This is such a beast of a release. I have no issues putting him at number one. It is one of my favorite Mattels ever. It is so good, man. It is so good. It's ridiculous. He comes in at number one. He is the king amongst them all, and I want to know down below where you guys stand. We have counted and ranked from worst to best. Every single WWE Ultimate Edition release from Mattel so far, man, from worst to best. On a fun, love ranking figures, as you guys know. I want to know down below what your favorite Ultimate is, what your least favorite Ultimate is, where I was wrong. I want to know all those things down in the comment section below, man. Had a ton of fun making videos like this. You guys know that I love rankings and all those different things, but that was it. I think I, I, I went back and forth. It took me a few hours to come up with this countdown. I went back and forth. I moved things around. And on certain days, I'm sure some things could move up and down the list, but I feel pretty good about this list, I think. I think this is about where I sit with all of these. Again, some of them could move up and down given the day, but I think as a collection, Mattel has knocked it out of the park with their Ultimate Editions, and I can't wait for all the ones we have coming soon. It's kind of hard to believe that we have 56 total. I mean, before long, we're going to have like a small collection of... I mean, we already have like a small collection of Ultimates, but before long, we're going to have freaking 100, 150, and there's already announced like 12 more or 10 more that are coming that we don't have in hand yet. Coliseum Collection Series 3. The Walmart Exclusive, the WCW one, the Ruthless Aggression one, Macho and Randy, Eric Bischoff, Kurt Angle, Bobby Lashley, Bianca Belair. Nonetheless, before we get out of here, man, a huge shout out to our patrons of the MDT YouTube channel. If you guys are interested in supporting me on Patreon and getting in on some exclusive deals, definitely go check that out. Link in the description below. Buy some merch at ProWrestlingTees.com slash MyDamnToys. But that pretty much wraps up my ranking of every WWE Ultimate Edition action figure from Mattel. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Being more active on TikTok lately, so definitely get in on that. Leave me your thoughts down below. I'll see you guys next time. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. You'll never be